Hello, folks, and welcome to the Wolf Den. This is Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel, Jacksonville, Florida. And what are we talking about today? Knives. And this particular knife right here is something I picked up on eBay years and years ago, thinking... Yeah, I could use this spaceship-looking knife for sheep's head cleaning. Yeah, that's what I could use it for. And it turns out that this thing is so deadly, you don't even need to use it for sheep's head cleaning. It's that badass. What are you looking at here? I mean, let's see. Overall, 14 inches. This right here would make Lynn Thompson of Cold Steel, old Cold Steel, proud of Dexter Russell. This is a Santy Safe, Santy Safe, Dexter Russell, SH275. I'm trying to read it here on the, on the blank on the tang what else it says something else stain free high carbon steel made in USA of course because it's Dexter Russell but look at this blade shape it's got a, this flat going down here the way it's ground you would never be able to get a knife like this today because this probably takes too much time to make. You know? I mean, look at the grinds. Look at that. They can't sell anything like this because this takes too much time. We got to, you know, companies need to just pump out just generic crap today. And I like Dexter Russell. I like him a lot. Everybody knows what a fillet knife looks like. This really isn't a fillet knife, I don't believe. I don't know what this was used for. It's double serrated, as you can see. And I mean the, the serrations, I don't believe, are hand done. This is, has to be machine done. Okay, I'm trying to show you here in the camera. That's not hand done hand ground serrations by any means this here I I got this on eBay for like 20 bucks and I kept looking and looking and looking for other unique cutlery that isn't necessarily you know uh, flay knife or anything I was always looking for like and I still do from time to time, looking for knives that are like butcher, old butcher and slaughterhouse knives. The handle, black, uh, whatever you, kind of hard plastic. It's not even soft. Fits the hand very well, though. Fits your hand very well. And... Uh, <laughs> The serrations is what gets me, and this bulbousness at the end here. That's what really got me. And I said to myself, oh, my God. I'll take this, this to the world's largest sheep's head tournament, and I always volunteer to help clean fish after the tournament. So I've had this knife at least 10 years. The tournament's going on, I think it's 22nd or 23rd year. So when I saw this on eBay, I said, I have to have it. Because you can cut and then you can flip it. You get double the cutting out of this. And uh, this would just be for ripping through fish scales and just ripping fillets right off their body. As I always say, taking their sides off. This would make Lynn Thompson of Cold Steel very proud, I'm sure. 
This is also what a weapon. What a weapon this is. Because I I've done really nothing to it. I see where up here. This has been used. I mean, this isn't brand new. I've done nothing to it since I've got it. And I'm telling you, you do not want to run your fingers down here with any pressure whatsoever. So that is a rip, snort, take them out of their suits kind of knife. I don't know what it was used for in the uh, butcher industry. If there's some meat cutters out there, maybe you've seen a good use for something like this. Me, I was going to use it for the most nastiest, scaly, bony species called sheep's head. They're nasty. They're spiny. They're full of bones. They're armor plated. Actually, I'd find cat. Um, I find personally cleaning a trigger fish easier. All you have to do is get through the armor plating of a trigger fish, and it's a done deal. Sheep said, "You still got to go, man. They got these giant rib cages and these uh, weapons called dorsal fins." I thought I'd share that with you. There's no real way, and I, I, I guess I can't say that. There's no real way of sharpening it. If it ever became dull, you would. I could probably put this into Wicked Edge. And what I'd want to do is just lightly hit the back side of the serrations. Because this is where the serrations are cut. And then there's the flat on the back here. You'd want to maybe just lightly hit that. And being that I want to be in the, try to do some, you know, being in the sharpening business, I might someday get thrown a, a curveball and somebody gives me something like this. I mean, I'm prepared to do serrated knives. You don't do them like you would do you know, anything else. I mean, I might not even be using the work sharp to... I, I've done all my own serrated knives, and I get them pretty dang wicked. I had numerous, numerous cold steel tiger claws, as some of you may know, that were all uh, karambit style hook bill, and I got those mega sharp. So that's how you would sharpen it. You'd go on to the flat side, and you would just make these little serrations. You'd just hit those and make them nice and smooth. So there you go. Is this a blast from the past? Because I don't believe Dexter Russell. I can't find them. Uh selling or making anything like this any longer. My God, what a weapon this is. You you hit something with this, and it is all over. It's all over. That's the reason I say a knife like this, made in the United States of America, would make Lynn Thompson proud. <laughs> and it looks like a spaceship.